Today I interviewed one of the world's most successful triathlon coaches, Brett the Doc Sutton. He has coached some of the world's most successful athletes, including four-time Ironman world champion Chrissy Wellington and Olympic champions Emma Snozel and Nicola Spirig. He's in Ireland to promote his Dove programme. I caught up with him after the Glyn Triathlon in County Limerick. I'm delighted to be uh, joining you here at uh, Wallace's Bar in Glen. You've been at uh, one of the triathlons in the country today. Uh, you've been talking about the Dove programme with us here. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit more about that programme and why you're actually in Ireland uh, today for the race? Well, we're just, uh, we're just starting it off. So one of the things we're trying to do is get around and spread the word. And, and one of the points with Ireland is it's most likely more like the Dove programme. What we've seen today was exactly what we're trying to do. It was a race that was for community. It was put on for charity. I think the Irish Heart Foundation was the recipient of all the money that was made today. And uh, all the guys, at, you know, it was a very friendly race. It was, it was banter. They're down in the pub now, everybody getting drunk, telling st tall stories about the race. It was just a real old time, shall we say, back to the future type of triathlon, which is what we want to do with Dove. Now what we want to do with Dove is take it one step further. And in our Dove races, we want to use that money to educate children uh, about exercise is good for them, but also what Dove stands for. It's an acronym, it's not a, not a company, I don't have a foundation. What we're trying to do is we say no to drugs and obesity uh, and violence through education. And so what we want to do is run little races just like this and, and have a donation made towards the local kids in the area. So we can actually put them together in a little triathlon or we can have a swim run and, and uh, then we have a, a talk about nutrition. So we bring a nutritionist in, we bring somebody in from the drugs area and, and we actually start the kids thinking about these things before they actually get confronted with it. And you've been rolling out this program across the world, or indeed you're trying to roll it out across the world at the moment. I believe Nicola Spirig was hosting her own event today she, exactly. at home. Yeah, she was doing a Nicola Spirig Kids Cup, and she's developed five races uh, through Switzerland. And the emphasis is on juniors. The kids, uh, it's a very low entry fee. And what we're trying to do is get ed exercise as being the number one thing for the kids to start with. And as they get a little bit older, the 14 year olds, we start to talk to them about drugs. And the deal is, most people don't understand. I, I'm horrified that most parents have no idea that by the time their kids are 14, they've had some brush with drugs. They just don't understand. And they say, not my children. At schools now, it's, it, there was a study in Britain that if three out of five kids by the age of 15 have had to make a decision. So these are the things that we think that, that what I think when I look at triathlon is a perfect vehicle to get that message across because we're trying to teach them about exercise. I'm not looking for the next uh, Ireland's fastest racer. I'm looking for the fact that we want the kids to do a bit of running a couple of times a week or someone might swim a couple of times a week. As happened today, I might do a little relay so someone swims, someone, but it's the awareness of the exercise is good for you rather than sitting down in front of the uh, idiot box with the, uh, the the games and saying, well, that's my, you know, that's my exercise, sitting there eating a bag of chips and drinking a Coke. I think that's the way we should be trying to change our children's attitudes towards that. And I suppose really it comes to, it stems down from the parents really, Brett. So the growth of triathlon in Ireland has seen a huge amount of people who are of, of an age, maybe in their mid-twenties, mid late-thirties, forties, mm. fifties, taking up the sport. So they're yep. really leading by example. So what you're doing now is you're coming in at the other side of it as well totally. to try and educate the children. Yes, well, I, I think that's a very good point. What happens with these people is they want to do something different in their life. And not only different, they think they want to live a healthier lifestyle. Now what I find is that triathlon is the best sport, and it's the reason I got into it, because it is the best sport. Because if you're a runner, you get bored, you do six runs a day. If you're triathlete, you can swim today, have a rest, and tomorrow do a run, then do a bike. It's a wonderful way to keep freshness in your sport. Now what we're saying is that lifestyle change can be passed down now and we want to catch the kids, and then when we do those kids, we want them to think about, okay, unlike their parents, just wait until they're 30. Okay, well, we'll do something every second day outdoors. And uh, with that, we can help them with the social ills that we, we have at the present moment that everybody sort of tries to ignore, but the underbelly is they're going on and it's getting worse. 
So I'd like to see triathlon and the professionals in triathlon take more of an interest in this side of the sport. There's been a huge transformation in Ireland really over the past number of years with the growth of the sport and we've a great squad of junior athletes mm -hmm. coming through as well which is amazing. What advice would you give to an age group athlete that's kind of mid-pack looking to move up the ranks slightly and um, you know probably doesn't have a coach is doing their own training plan is probably training with a club mm -hmm. you know where where should they see improvements or where should they focus their strengths? Well, I think the two, two things from that area is you have the ones that's trying to be elite and the, and the age group is that want to be better. And that's what we're trying to promote the clubs. Uh, it, within the Dove program, we have, a, we have a whole pillar that it's about clubs. And then people can come and join a club and then have a coach at the club. So then they get some direction because that's the most important thing. How you do your holistic, shall we say, pie of I work, I have a family, and I want to train. So how do we fit that? So everybody is beneficial. That's number one. So for me, it's joining a club, finding a coach, either through the club. Some people want to do their own thing. That's wonderful. Brett, you've had an amazing career. You've coached some of the world's top athletes. Chrissy Wellington, you know, a, a female role model and ambassador for the sport. Absolutely yep. amazing lady. What has been for you the highlight of your career to date? Well, funny enough, as I said, I. One of my biggest disadvantages is trying to get Dove going is because of the success we've had at the top level. I don't realise that's where we come from, from an age group background. I started with an age group team. I switched from swimming because I enjoyed the age groupers. So, of course, once I've had the success with all the, the top guys, they're thinking, well, that's all you worry about. And that's why I'm here in Ireland trying to, trying to regress from that. Um, but Chrissy was a wonderful uh, moment in my sport. Nicholas Berry won the Olympic gold medal which uh, was also fantastic. Most people wouldn't know in Ireland or anywhere actually that they both shared a room and they come to their first camp with me. So that lasted exactly one day. And then both of them went on to immortality as far as Chrissy in the long race and Nicola in the short race. Um, so before that I trained Emma Snowsill um, and then uh, Loretta Harrick was a fantastic athlete. I trained Tim Don as well. So. You know, we've had, a, we've had a, good, a very good time with it. So the one thing when people come to me, if you ask me what, what do I think, is their ability to work. You know, and it's the same when you ask about the juniors. I look at a kid, I don't see how fast they swim, I don't see how fast they run. I see their, their desire to become good. I see their desire to put the work in. I think you can get mentally strong if you have that desire. I think you can, I think you can overcome some of the uh, talent deficiencies if you've got the work ability. And so we look for the work ethic. And most of our age groupers in Ireland will have come from either a, a running or a cycling background. Swimming mm -hmm. is the biggest fear to be overcome yeah. by that age group athlete. Yeah. What would you suggest for athletes coming to the sport where swimming is their biggest fear? I think I think the biggest problem there is, and it's not just it's not just Ireland. Like if you're not coming from Australia or America, where they have a big swim background, everybody's got that same problem. I think the bottom line is they've got to get consistent at it. I see so many people trying to get good at swimming, but they only swim very small amounts, and they only do it twice a week. And you just can't do it. You know, swimming is one of those things that it's three times a week minimum, and it's got to be an hour. If you do any less than that you won't improve your swimming, no matter what stroke you've got. And Brett, we're going to finish up very shortly, but what do you do when you're downtime? What's your, uh, what's your focus? Any, <laughs> I don't have any downtime at the present moment. And, uh, I suppose what I do when I've got a, a bit of spare time is I play tennis with my daughter. So at the present moment, she's in a tennis tournament in Switzerland while I'm here. And do you think uh, if you came to Ireland again, would you race with us? Oh, definitely. definitely. I'll be, we'll be back. Well, I won't be racing, but I'll be definitely coming here and hopefully we'll put one or two dub races on in Ireland. And I wish you the very best of luck with the programme and uh, I hope we do see you in Ireland again and uh, that we can sit down and chat about the success sure. of the programme across the country and indeed across the world. That would be wonderful. Thanks very much for your time. I appreciate it. Stephen Teeling Lynch, uh, Go Try Racing, has gone from strength to strength over the past number of years. You've had a phenomenal season with your team in 2014. Do you want to tell us some of the highlights of that season? Um, I suppose like the, the biggest thing is that you know, there's no one person winning everything. Um, we kind of have this ethos that uh, together everybody pushes everybody forward. 
Um, I suppose the highlight is obviously seeing Carolyn go from you know top 20 female at Kilkee last year to winning it this year. And seeing Rory get back on the podium there and winning at home was, was nice and the Crooks having another very good season. The likes of Becky Cochran, Joanne Flanagan getting their first wins. A lot of the guys have just literally got off the couch and you know completing their first draft and it's always a fun uh, and enjoyable thing. And seeing some of the junior team as well and all that kind of stuff has, has been good. It's not one real thing. It's just been a fantastic season across the board, really. Yeah, like, you know, at this moment in time, we're so was leading the men, men's men's team rankings, women's team rankings, mixed team rankings, and that's the biggest thing for me. Like that, at the end of the season, as a club, we will be on top. And, you know, no one person can do that. It takes six people in each of it. That's the biggest thing for me. Now you started back a number of years ago as a coaching company per se and now you're a club. How has the structure of it all changed that you're now a team working together um, as one big happy family? Um, it's, it's been a big change but like the, obviously it started back in 2008, 2009, started the company. It was um, I want to be a lead athlete and still want to be a lead athlete but um, so we started coaching when I was injured and it just the ball started rolling. It did three years with Traff in Ireland notable performances with Con Doherty and such like that and what happened is people started coming and this big family started started to create itself and I mean decided then two years ago to to, to establish it formally with um, a great chairperson Mark Jeffers and um, my girlfriend as well Jen who stepped up to, to really kind of cement the club and everybody's got on board like even this year now our committee's bigger and a lot of people taking on a lot more roles and organising that sort of things and it's allowed me then to just coach and stuff and you know that's where my passion that's where my talents lie not in racing unfortunately but um, it's been good it's been and good. you have brought here to uh, County Limerick to the triathlon that was here this morning what can only be described as the world's best triathlon coach I mean there is no disputing it he has produced some serious champions over the years Brett Sutton joined you here and uh, it must be amazing to have him here for the day I learnt more in 20 minutes in the drive down from the airport with Brett than I've learnt in any coaching course that I've ever paid I've paid a thousand, you know, thirteen hundred euros to do level three, and you know, twenty minutes in the car, and I was astounded, astounded on the way down. But, you know, this morning we spent a half an hour with him in the pool. And you're just watching the guys, and you know, he doesn't say too much, and it's just the way he breaks it down simply. Like you know, we all overthink it. But yeah, we're very, very lucky, and very happy that he even wrote back to me when I asked him to you know, come even chat. Um, so yeah, we're delighted he's come over. He's spent the two days with me. And hopefully now that will lead into building a coaching relationship and that's only going to benefit the team and benefit the club and surrounding coaches as well. Like, you know, we want to bring on a number of different coaches. We have people here from Predator Triathlon and Limerick Triathlon Club as well. And it's, it's hopefully going to build a, a big relationship for the country. Stephen, go try, Dolly. You've had an amazing year, an amazing 2014. Where do you hope to be in 2015? Um, it's a good question. The long term project is to have a team that's going to race in British Series and obviously down the line in the ITU. It's going to take four or five years for us to develop that pathway and to develop a number of athletes that have that ability and then to bring on a number of domestic races. That's where we kind of see it. I'm not going to wait for Triathlon Ireland to produce that. I'm not going to wait for anybody on an individual basis to do that. I think as a team, we'll have the opportunity to maybe go get sponsors to maybe support each other in doing that. In terms of domestically, where we have, what do we want to see? It's going to depend on what way the series is, is based next year. So there's some big changes coming, um, and it's interesting. I believe, you know, a draft, draft a non-drafting race, or, sorry, a draft legal race in this country, or a series of those races, even if it's only two athlon, would be fantastic. And that's where we need to start to do it. We need to get to the level of, of even a British series or you know, eventually down the line have a, a French Cup series or something like that or even team up with a number of different clubs in France to, to start to bring on our juniors so when they do get up to the levels of Connor, Gavin, Brian, Aileen and a number of others they're not making such a big jump um, so we are a little bit behind but where do I see 2015? I see Roy Sexton having a very very big year um, see a couple of young juniors coming through, Carolyn, hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, I see some really, really talented 
athletes that you haven't heard about yet making some big, big performances. And George Bush, uh, I might even do one or two of myself.